Winter is coming, but you don't know when. It might be tomorrow, a month, or a year from now. The outside is slowly breaching in. Seasons are like that. They get through the skin. Make it sweaty, warm, or cold. They pierce through human fingerprints, through handmade fabrics, and walls of uninsulated apartments in cities with soaring rent prices. The joke's on us, whoever we are. A species so smart it built itself a comfortable environment, thinking we're separate from it. So separate we could rearrange water and dirt, take anything out, oil, wood, iron, carbon. First, just fire, then agriculture. With that, grazing, forest management. Nation states are in the game, looking around, hungry, hunting, over hunting. A few small extinctions, no worries yet. Burn that carbon, exploit the animals, buy, sell, consume. We can create wealth forever. Well, there we were, just getting going. And then, nuclearity reigned over us for the first time. If you ever wonder what we'll be remembered for, wonder with hope. Epochs will pass, and the rocks will remember radioactivity, and they'll remember plastic. Now the riddle is, who are we? Imagine a beginning, start from there, the Anthropos. Human, according to the ancient Greeks, who we know are the Western man's fundamentals for any discourse. The Anthropos, a species like any other, yet unlike any other, why? Some say it's intelligence, others say it's heightened complexity, and its ability to cooperate flexibly in large numbers. Whatever the reason, one thing is certain. Often, through time and space, members of our species have considered themselves very special and different, highly superior beings. We created an ontological split between us humans, subjects, and non-humans objects. We took the outside as for us, not for itself. Yet things aren't for taking, they take us back. Viruses evolve with our medicine, insects with our global warming. We perceive the world in human ways, we talk to it in human tongues, and we wonder why it doesn't answer. Why, why? Maybe it does answer. The flower flowers, the tiger tigers, and the rock rocks. To each their own translation of reality. What the trees access through their relation with the earth, we cannot experience, nor can the earth understand our human ways. How this planet gets us, no one does. You see, we aren't so different. We translate one another. You, me, viruses, the planet and the rocks. We don't grasp each other entirely, but we exist together on the same play. Resources aren't laying here for us to pick up endlessly, yet we speak of them as if they are. Our common international language is now accumulation, profit. This kind of speech sure loves numbers, especially numbers that fiscalize. Isn't it better to price forests? You know their value if you put a number on it. To price land, price rivers, price water. Someone really said that. Why should water be free? Everything could possibly be owned. 
But there's a trick. Everything you own, owns you back. Cliché as it is. After you eat the best-tasting guacamole made from hand-picked avocados in a mafia economy of the Latin Americas, the guacamole is inside you. Your gut bacteria and the guac bruschetta have a picnic. And they're all dressed properly, because even our microbiome has caught up with these dangerous times. But you mustn't be afraid. Even with the sixth extension ongoing, something else will come, as it always has. Optimistic pessimism. Well, we gotta start somewhere. And what better place than naming this now, this future incoming, this past we can't understand, this this? Like a newborn, baptized after his parents, this Anthropocene. You might have heard of it. It's quite famous by now. This now. This time we live in. Named after us. Meaning that we altered Earth in such a way that we started a new geological epoch. Or maybe it's an event. Kind of like a surprise party in which almost everyone gets really drunk, overdoses, and dies, including the neighbors who weren't invited, like trees and coral reefs. Kidding, everyone's invited. It's a mandatory planet party, we're having tons of fun, and we're definitely not cleaning up. Just pushing the garbage a bit further away. Another country, another continent, Or why not? Low Earth orbit. We're arrogant, but we're not really the most popular here. There's weed and viruses. They've got some moves. And fungi. They own the place. They'll own it for years and years. When did it start, this party? First, it's difficult to say because we can't really tell who's the guest and who's the host. But second, there are too many theories. Human-centered, because, well, we're the DJs at least. Did we first put music on when we started doing agriculture? Some say that's a path we never got off from, tied ourselves to land and crops, like traditional marriage growing civilization endlessly. Others say it really took off with the Industrial Revolution. Like when the good music starts playing, steam engine tunes, factory and work intensive, and all the cool guests start showing up. But you know that point when everyone's having the best fun, like they're on a fucking roll, is just a new level, man. That's the bomb. No kidding. The nuclear bomb changed everything. Another mood. You can sense it. Because after it, there comes the 50s. The great acceleration. Consumption increases of everything. All resources allocated to this party. It's so intense. Even future resources especially those. Then suddenly, someone turns on the light. The party's so damn loud, they say. You realize they've been saying so before, but the music was a blast. But now your ears are hurting a bit, and you're dizzy. You really did drink too much. Someone made that drink, girl. Did you think about that? Too late. Can't really go home when the party's on the entire planet. Scranton said, The problem is us. Morton wrote that reality is not straight, that we need to keep the future open. Haraway told us there's no individual. We've always been lichens. Meville argued, 
we must utopia as hard as we can, and we must. There's no golden age to go back to, however we imagine morality. Whether we value life or not, whether we consider ourselves responsible for our actions or not. With everything so bounded, with the confetti at the doors and glass shards on the shores, our choices are facing us. Hope, passivity, resistance, death. Which one do you go about? Remember to ask yourself, who are we? What kind of being with such power of self-definition? And knowing this, what questions should we really ask to decenter ourselves, to look for ones beyond our reflection? The riddle is still on.